Hello and welcome to the Real News Network and News Click. After losing four consecutive elections since 2002, Brazil's right-wing politicians are now back in power. In September 2016, they engineered a constitutional coup that removed President Dilma Rousseff from power. And today we speak with Marco Brazilian Landless Workers Movement to get a sense of what has happened in the last five months since the coup. Marco, welcome uh, to the program. Uh, since Michel Temer has assumed power uh, in September 2016, there are reports that he's managed in such a short while to engineer a sharp right turn in Brazilian politics. Can you give us a snapshot as what, of what has happened in the last uh, five months mm -hmm. in Brazil? So actually, first of all, about, uh, about the, the speed of the, of the reforms and the acts of the president, of course, this has to do with the fact that the right wing knows that they cannot win elections with this kind of mm -hmm. program. So they have to run, rush to be able to implement the reforms that they think are the, the best now for the country. But actually what's happening is a, it's like a total destruction of the, the little uh, the little advance or progresses that we had in terms of social welfare and even economics in the country in the last 10, 12 years with the Workers' Party uh, government. So, for instance, they now approve approving um, labor reforms that will uh, make possible for a worker to work for even 12 hours a day mm -hmm. or 60 hours a week. Just to make sure, I mean, the, the actual, the current law is eight hours maximum and 44 maximum uh, a week. Uh, in terms of the pensions, uh, also they are now with the project in the Congress trying to force people to work at least for 49 years in order to be able to retire mm -hmm. with 100% uh, of, of the salary. Uh, which makes absolutely impossible for anyone. Just so you to know, right now, if this law was already uh, 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 working, only 2% of the workers uh, retire after 49 years of work. Uh, in terms of uh, investments in health and education, they have just approved also in the Congress one law that even the IMF criticized. Mm -hmm. saying that, I mean, they are not going, they are going to freeze all the investments for 20 years. I mean, of course, the population will grow a lot in 20 years, but there's not going to be more investments in health and education. And there are reports that along with the Agrarian Reform Ministry, the Human Rights Ministry has also been sort of shut down. They tried to shut down the culture ministry, but there was a huge <laughs> yes, sort of opposition to that. Exactly. But in terms of, um, you know, representing the Brazilian landless workers movement, one of the largest social movements, and which has a strong program of agrarian reform, of food sovereignty, what has been the response of the progressive movements in challenging some of these regressive steps? We are doing what we know, struggle, mobilizing people. But uh, it's true that not only MST, but I would say the left forces as a whole, uh, we are not being able to mobilize enough people right now in order to stop uh, the implementation of the reforms of the government. Uh, this has to do with like many, it's a very complex uh, issue, uh, but it's true that in the last 20 years, most of the left uh, kind of detached from, from the grassroots organizing. So I guess now it's reflecting mm -hmm. this, uh, this in a, in capacity of have like huge mobilizations against uh, the neoliberal agenda that's being, has been forced again uh, to the population. But I would say MST, I mean, we're doing a lot of mobilizations, uh, occupations as always, blocking roads. Uh, we are also part of a, of a, a so-called uh, Frente Brasil Popular, uh, Popular Brazil, People's Brazil Front, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a, a sort of a platform of many social movements, people's movements, uh, unions, even parties. Uh, PT is, is also part of this front. That it's uh, it's an effort of the the whole progressive uh, uh, forces of the country. 
to counter-react the attacks of the right. And ironically, the current president, uh, Temma, also faces serious charges of corruption. I want you to give us a sense of how is the judiciary responding to ongoing cases of corruption against the right wing and how the judiciary is being manipulated. Yeah, Benny, that, that's actually, I would say, this is one of the most important and, and gravest uh, things that's going on in the country right now. Um, looks like the elite of Latin America, at least, they have realized, uh, they have learned with the history, and they have realized that uh, a military coup, as we experienced so many times in our continent in the last 40, 50 years, is no longer so efficient. So what they have done, uh, they have started these experiences on Honduras, then they have done this in Paraguay in the last, with Lugo in the last years, Zelaya in Honduras, and now they have done this with uh, Juma. They are using the judiciary as the main weapon mm -hmm. to uh, organize uh, and realize coup d'etat. What's going on in the country right now is that we have a, a part of the judiciary uh, very political active, I would say, and, and very selective in terms of how to deal with denouncements of, uh, of corruption. Uh, when it's up to the Workers' Party, everybody is, I mean, at first also, excuse me, uh, it's also important to underline the role of the media, because mm -hmm. it's the judiciary and the media working together uh, to create also a sense of, of um, um, uh, political corruption and, and, and who was supposed to be punished. So, for instance, uh, every time that you have one denouncement against Lula or Dilma, this is in the, in the headlines of every newspaper. This is like minutes and minutes in the in television, in the news and television. And you have... Right after, you have investigations started, but at the end of the day, after at least two years of a huge investigation, there's no evidence at all against Zuma or Lula in any one of these uh, so-called corruption accusations. But at the other side, with the right wing, President Temer, for instance, was already quoted 43 times mm -hmm. in just one of the plea bargains that are being uh, now uh, revealed. So this is, it's, it's been clear right now for us that uh, judiciary is now the center of uh, the right-wing operations in the country. I want to focus on Jose Seja, the sure. foreign minister. And you've spoken about the challenges within the state of Brazil. But I want to take you back to 2003 when Lula was instrumental in stopping the free trade area of the Americas and then you had an attempt with other progressive governments to further regional integration. But now with Seha as foreign minister, you see a far more uh, sort of pronounced free trade agenda yes. and also undermining Brazil's role in the BRICS. Can you speak a bit about the foreign policy changes? Yeah under Tema and Seha. So, yeah, Jose Seha, it's a, it's a very uh, critical f figure in the last years uh, to the right wing. Uh, we have just found out uh, by a document, leaked document, that Seha has been working or operating to U.S. interests in, in Brazil. This is public. Mm -hmm. um, so, as Minister of Foreign Relations uh, of Temer government, he uh, already <coughs> is uh, establishing a very clear agenda. First, to reestablish the subservient relations with the U.S., something that clearly the Workers' Party government has uh, broken this tradition <laughs> in, in Brazilian uh, politics. Um, Serra was actually, uh, if Serra lost to Lula in 2002, but if he won it, Mm -hmm. The FTAA would be, would have would be signed in the first day of government. So now they are they are doing this. Uh, they are undermining uh, Mercosul, mm -hmm. which is the, the, the South American uh, platform, the, the trade agreements and also uh, political agreements. He's undermining that. 
He's undermining uh, the role of Brazilian BRICS. Actually, as you know, he didn't even know what BRICS was. There's mm -hmm. like a famous uh, uh, video of him. And uh, I mean, to sort of conclude, you've spoken about um, the response of social movements. I want you to sort of reflect a bit about the more institutional left party response to the crisis uh, that you see in Brazil, not just in Brazil, but across Latin America now where you have an upsurge of, of right-wing parties. And um, there was a certain level of criticism towards the Workers' Party, mm -hmm. but um, you've seen splinters, you've seen some politicians form more left parties. But in terms of in the next elections, a more institutional response, which is a more radical, progressive socialist platform on which the left can fight elections. Can you sort of give us a... I think so. I, I believe so. Not only the Workers' Party, because I guess it's, it's, this is a task for the whole left of the country, for the, social, the, the people's movements, to the unions, to the other left parties, not only uh, uh, the Workers' Party. But one thing that um, it's interesting right now, you know that the main the main fear of the right wing right now, it's Lula, mm -hmm. still Lula. Because right now he seems to be the only person able to defeat the right in 2018. Just so you to know, in the polls, all the polls, he is by far the first place. 35% of the intentions of vote, and the second one has 18% or even less. Uh, we still don't know what's what's going to happen um there's many uh speculations that i mean workers party should not run alone but as part of a front mm -hmm. of parties and okay. movements i think this would this is maybe is more likely to happen uh but lula is still the name and it's not by chance that the main tactics of right wing right now regarding the next elections it to, is to put lula in jail mm -hmm. Every day they try, they think about one strategy, a different strategy, but they know that if Lula is not in jail, it's very hard to defeat him in the next elections. So, but one thing, of course, it's having Lula. The other thing is the program. Yeah. I think this is the main task for mm -hmm. the left right now. So it's clearly a very critical juncture in Brazilian politics and sort of very interesting and challenging times for the left. And Thank you very much yeah. for speaking with us. <laughs>